Apple did over $274 billion in 2020, and you don't get there by accident. They have amazing marketing, advertising, and copywriting, which is why in today's video, I'll be covering six different examples from Apple that we can learn from to improve our own copywriting and advertising. In this first advertisement, Apple actually took a jab at Android. Now I've both personally owned Android and Apple devices, so I'm not really on either team right now, although I do currently own an Android. But nonetheless, I thought this was a great example of good copywriting and advertising because we see this again and again in the business world. Maybe it's BMW versus Audi, it's Apple versus Android. And in this case, Apple actually mocked Android after they had a safety problem with their Google Play Store. In the advertisement, a woman reaches for a shelf that is supposed to be Google Play or Android, and it essentially explodes into a mist. And then when she goes over to the Apple Store shelf, it works perfectly fine. I'll play it right now. Now note that in this ad, the only copy really is your store and app store, but that alone and the visuals implies that the Apple store is easier to use, more friendly, and just better. Everyone loves to have some kind of opposition or villain, and that's what's really common in a lot of advertising and copywriting, is teaming together with the reader against some kind of common enemy because it creates that camaraderie and that relationship and rapport. And obviously something that's been going on the past few years are privacy concerns with iOS and different platforms and browsers. So I think this was an amazing ad by Apple because it also plays off that. But some of the main takeaways from this ad, firstly would be trying to find some kind of common enemy that you and the reader can team up against. Secondly, try to play off recent events so it's very relevant, people can resonate with it. And it actually might even give it a little bit of a viral effect. Thirdly, make sure that the copy and the images go hand in hand. As you can tell with this ad, in terms of the visuals, there wasn't actually a lot of copy, but without the actual shelf breaking down, it wouldn't have made sense. Number two is iPhone's zero waste campaign. This was an environmental campaign that Apple was pushing around the time they were releasing their iPhone X, which was perfect because it allowed them to promote that at the same time. It's playful, bouncy, and upbeat, and ultimately just shows you how to use all these great new features in a really short amount of time while comparing it to competitors and making it seem even better. Now, what I love about this is that it actually shows the product in motion and how to use it. And that's one of the hallmarks of a really great advertisement is that it actually shows somebody using the product. In this case, it's really just the screen and showing you the individual features, but it's nice to see that so you actually know what the feature in the product looks like. Now, also they played into the idea of it being environmentally friendly, Apple and the iPhone that is. And this is really important because Apple probably really knows their customer base. They have tons of data, insights, and analytics, and they probably figured out that a lot of their customers and users are environmentally friendly people themselves. So this really goes into understanding your buyer persona or ICP, ideal customer profile. And when you really understand your buyer persona, you can create campaigns that really harmonize with them deep down. And ultimately they'll recognize that, they'll resonate with the ad, and they'll be much more likely to actually connect with it and engage. All right, the third example is the above the fold section on the Apple homepage. I think their website's an amazing example of what good copywriting is all about. Whether you're on the homepage, their inner products pages, you can pretty much go anywhere and find some really good copy here. Now actually when the iPhone 11 Pro was released, I have a nice little screenshot here of what the homepage actually looked like. And I think it was an awesome example we can learn from. Now, a couple of things to note. One, you'll see that the product title is iPhone 11 Pro and the subtitle is Pro Cameras, Pro Display, Pro Performance. So the reader knows exactly what they're getting, which is the iPhone Pro 11 and the features or the benefits, which is a really good display, camera, and performance. Below this in the gray text, we see from 28, 29 a month or $679 with a trade-in. Customers know exactly how much they're gonna pay and they also position the product a little differently here, making it seem more affordable than it is by showing the monthly value if they wanna do financing or if they actually trade in an old phone, it's only 679 versus the maybe $1,000 plus they're normally gonna pay. And this is followed by two calls to action, learn more and buy. Now this is important that they have two calls to action because people convert for different reasons. One person might come to the website, they're a huge Apple fanatic, they buy every new phone when it's dropped, which is probably most people with Apple devices, and they're just gonna click the buy button and convert. But on the flip side, maybe someone comes to the website, they wanna learn more about the specs, the colors, and really what they get out of it. They're gonna click learn more, probably go to the product page, and then learn a bit more before they actually buy it. A few things that you can take away from this and apply today is one, positioning your pricing differently. Normally an iPhone is probably gonna be in the $1,000 range, 
but by positioning this trade-in or the monthly installment, it makes a normally expensive product a lot less intimidating and also opens the door for a lot more people to get it. Secondly, make sure to use a content hierarchy. This means using headers, switching up the font size, the colors, and making it really easy on the eyes. And then as you go down the page, or just in this case, the above the fold, you get smaller and smaller text that also contrasts with the page so it catches your eye. Thirdly, make sure to use high quality photos, especially if you're selling physical products. People really wanna see what the product looks like at different angles and lighting, and it really helps them understand what they're getting before they buy it. All right, example number four is an ad they actually did for the MacBook. And I love this because it's an example of a simple ad that performs very well. And there's one thing that Apple has always really had going for them is that they're futuristic, they're really up to date on trends and technology, and that's what Steve Jobs was all about. He was all about being a visionary. He was thinking about smartphones, tablets, touchscreens, and these things way before anyone else was or any other company was. So if you look at this ad, it's actually really simple and straightforward. It says MacBook light years ahead. But you actually might have to read this once or twice again to actually catch the play on words they did here. So it says light years ahead, obviously meaning that they're futuristic, they have technology and features that you're not gonna get if you go to a competitor, but note how they use the full stop or the period after light. So they're literally saying it's a very light, thin, and easy to carry MacBook, but also it's light years ahead. It actually has a lot of technology and features. And I think it says something about their confidence and what they're able to provide the market because they don't have to elaborate with tons of bullet points or information. It's literally just a few words on the ad that speaks for itself. And this is amazing because after years and years, decades really of establishing a brand, everybody knows them, they're a household name, and they almost don't even have to explain what the product is. Something you can do is actually experiment with simpler ads. Now, normally as a benchmark, the more expensive and complex the product is, the more copy you need to explain that. But I think Apple really broke this rule and did well. So something can also consider is actually taking that expensive product, but writing shorter ads that are really straight to the point maybe have some kind of creative element to them. Secondly, you can also let your branding and authority just speak for itself. Once you actually have enough authority and credibility, a lot of people will know your product, your brand name, your service, and you can actually let that do the talking, especially with really good images. So back in 2018, Apple actually announced the launch of the Apple Store search ads, which essentially helps brands reach more users, get more downloads, and increase their brand awareness. Now you can see at the top of the page here, it begins with the title, Top of Search, Top of Mind. That's followed by Apple Search Ads is an efficient and easy way to help people discover your app at the top of App Store search results. Now I think that the title really speaks to the developer's needs, which is reaching more people, being at the top of the list or the search engine inside the app store, because if they get more installs, downloads, and customers, that means more revenue. Note how the copy here communicates that the app store ads are an efficient way, so probably they're gonna get a really good return on their ad spend, and it's time efficient, and it's an easy way to help people discover your app. So they're essentially positioning it once again as something that's efficient, easy to use, and the benefit of that is more people are actually getting your app. And then it's followed by a call to action to get people actually trying out these ads into the funnel. Scrolling down the page, we see an offer for $100 of free Apple search ads credits. Now this is pretty cool because it essentially gets people into their funnel, getting this $100 for free, using the ads, getting results, figuring out the platform, and then they'll be actually more likely to plugging in their credit card, their bank account, and actually spending more on the ads. And I'm a huge fan of data, stats, and actually proving what you're talking about. And Apple does this as well, citing some stats about the App Store and ads. Using data and stats in your copywriting is really important just to back up any kind of claims you make. And it's a really easy way just to bring in some credibility and authority. And it doesn't actually have to be in-house data if you don't have it, or if your client doesn't have it. You can actually just go to Google, type in a keyword, followed by stats or data, case studies, something like that and you'll find dozens and dozens of roundups you can actually source data from. And the cherry on top is the testimonial section because this is social proof. This shows that other people, other businesses used these ads, generated results, and were happy with the product. And as a consumer, whether it's B2B or B2C, everyone is gonna look for testimonials and reviews as social proof. We wanna make sure that we're spending our money wisely, we're getting a good product and a good deal. And one of the ways we can always assure that is by seeing if other customers use the product themselves and enjoyed it. Number six is probably going to be my absolute favorite. This is Apple's 1984 ad. I wasn't even born then, and this is still one of my favorite ads I've ever seen. I think it's an amazing example between when you have a futuristic, game-changing product, really good copy, good advertising, good branding, and you mix it all together. So at the time, George Orwell just released his novel, which was titled 1984, and it's essentially a futuristic, dystopian kind of novel where Big Brother is constantly watching you, and there's all these things about security and privacy. 
Now at that time, it actually got people really paranoid that this was actually gonna happen in real life. So they weren't really that welcoming to new technology and advancements in technology. And Apple, of course, knew that, which isn't good because they're a technology company. So what they did is they actually made this ad that just completely shatters that belief. Now, essentially the ad shows a woman dressed in track attire, also an Apple tank top, with a sledgehammer running through this dystopian environment of drones, machines, and guards. And she reaches this giant screen representing Big Brother, lines up, throws the hammer, the screen explodes, and everyone's knocked out of this trance. And then it's followed by some copy saying, on January 24th, Apple computers will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. And essentially, ultimately, they wanted this ad to break that whole idea that technology is a bad thing, and they wanted to show them that good things can actually come out of advancements and technology like the Macintosh computer. It also helped them sell $3.5 million in Macintosh computers, which isn't too bad. Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world and you do not get there by accident. As I mentioned before, they have amazing copywriting, branding, advertising, you name it. And I think as a copywriter and a marketer, we can easily look up to these companies, study their ads, how they position themselves, everything in between. We can take so much away from that to grow our own businesses and our clients. And that's why today I wanted to look at Apple. And if you actually enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my series where I'm actually breaking down the copy of different businesses, web pages, and things I've worked on myself. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel and let me know in the comments if there's any kind of topics you want me to cover in a future video. But other than that, hope you're staying safe and healthy right now and I'll catch you in the next one.